Okay. Okay. There are three different types of scales. They're either large, medium, or small. So take a moment to look at this, and then I'll ask you a question. So if we were looking at a map of California versus a map of Santa Cruz County, which one would be large and which one would be small? So California would be the small scale and the one of Santa Cruz County would be the large scale. And it may be intuitive, you know, you think, oh, Santa, uh, Santa Cruz is small, so it's small scale, but it's not. We're talking about the scale. How much information we're getting a large amount of information onto a smaller piece of paper, on a piece, small piece of paper, so it's considered small scale, where a smaller area on paper would be a larger scale. So when you look at any map, a AAA map, and it says one inch is equal to five miles, what distance are you getting the scale for? Can you repeat that? Sure. Um, so you open up a AAA map. You want to get from Santa Cruz to San Jose. So you open up a AAA map, and it says one inch is equal to five miles. And you measure that it's uh, one inch. No, it's two inches. If you look at the city of Santa Cruz and you look at the city of San Jose, and you measure it, it's only two inches. You're going to say, oh, it's only ten miles to get there, right? Because it's one inch is equal to five miles. But what is that scale really representing? Which kind of distance? Oh, horizontal. Oh, Horizontal, vertical, or slope. It's representing horizontal. the horizontal distance, right? So unless we knew what the topography was like, we would totally be misinformed as to how long it would take us to get somewhere. Because if we're just measuring on a map, it's plan view, you're learning horizontal distance. That's why typically on a map, you know how sometimes in the bottom corner they have these little, they have a grid that says, if you're going from Monterey or Carmel or Santa Cruz or Watsonville, and then if you're going to, you know, so you can look to see how long it's going to take you to get there, they're trying to let somebody know the 3D shape actually right. of it, right? So that you know it's going to take 20 minutes to get to San Jose or 25, not 10 minutes. Okay? Um, And, and you also know that if you were backpacking, you would really need to understand how to read those topos. Because if you're going up a steep incline, a sleep, and you just, a steep incline and then a steep decline, if, if you were just using a scale and measuring the horizontal distance, you'd have no clue as to how long it would take you. I mean, it would be really unsafe to be backpacking a place where you don't have a topo that you really don't know what the lay of the land is like in terms of its vertical change. Okay, so we are, okay. So a contour line. So a contour line is a line connecting points of equal elevation. So if we go back, if we go back to uh, this picture, we already said these are contour lines, right? So every point along this line is 140. And what did we mention that the difference is here in elevation? 20. And notice it's consistent, right? They determine that the contour interval, the contour interval is 20 feet. So let's go back and look at where they have a contour interval. The contour interval is the vertical distance between the level surfaces forming the contour lines. The contour interval selection depends on the terrain and the size of the area being mapped. Elevation should be able to interpolate within one half of the contour. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. So let's take a look at this table. This is a really important table, and you would want to be able to reference this all the time. So imperial system, we're looking at inches and feet. So on average terrain, and we're going to be working in average terrain, if I have a scale of my map, and do you understand how to read this now? It says 200 feet per inch. So what kind of scale is this? Read it to me in a regular scale. One inch is equal to 200 feet, right? Everybody got that? And this one is one inch is equal to 500 feet. So if we were working on terrain that was considered average, which is what we're going to be doing, 
and you're using a scale of your map, which is how big the area is that you want to get on how big the piece of paper, and you use a scale of one inch is equal to 500 feet, what's your contour interval going to be? Five. Uh, 500 feet. Oh, sorry. 10, right? So in this case, the example that we saw, they were using a 20-foot interval, right? Well, I don't know if it would be considered average terrain because there was that drop-off, you know, so we don't really know. If it was considered average, then this is the scale they must have been using. Okay, so everybody needs to know this, that once you figure out how big the area is that you're going to map and you figure out how big your paper is, you know what your scale is. And once you know your scale, then you know what would be an appropriate contour interval. Allison? So they were using the 1H to 1,000 feet. My, that's my so guess, but I have a feeling that that wasn't considered average terrain. We had this huge slope and a cliff. And you know that because of the contour interval? Right. This is the appropriate contour interval that goes with the scale. Okay. Uh, but just to, for the for the, that example, they were more likely using a 1 to 500 scale on that. With more, well, no, excuse me. The, the scale is probably 1 to 500 with a 20 foot interval. They were adding more intervals at a smaller scale, <coughs> um, at a larger scale. They were adding more intervals at a larger yeah, scale to deviate. Because why do I say that? Yeah. Because she's saying on average terrain, you're looking at tw an interval that's suitable to express the terrain is 20 feet. And that was an average. But that was an average terrain. So I'm saying if it's more complicated terrain, you're probably going to drop your interval down, so you can get more. Uh, you can understand the terrain better. I don't know. It's kind of well, let's see. So you have more detail in the map. Correct. Correct. Because that's not average terrain. No, I agree. Right. Yeah. So you have, you have just an observation. If you, you're going to drop your interval to get a higher degree of detail. A higher definition. Right. Yeah. In that case, it was warranted because it was more extreme so terrain. Right. Okay, let's look at the map for a minute and come back because I want to explain what they're talking about, about one half the interval. Sure. If you go back to this picture, whatever contour line you choose, you have to be able to interpolate between. So this is totally fine. I could find where 170 foot elevation is. Mm -hmm. I could even find where 30 foot elevation is. I have a little bit of detail, I mean difficulty finding the, contour, the halfway point between these, right? Yeah. So this is kind of an anomaly on this map. But every other contour line, I can find the halfway point. And that's what's really important to be able to choose. So. Looking at this description here, it says elevation should be able to be interpolated on a map within one half the contour. Thus, if you want an accuracy of 10 feet, if you want to be able to find 10 feet, you're going to choose a contour interval of 20 feet. So, Brian, let's go back to your thing now. So, on that map, 20 foot interval was fine, except with the, that little drop off, the drop off, right? Yeah. So now you're saying that if it wasn't average terrain and they chose 20, you guys have to help me out. Um, if, you, if you're if you using 20. I'm saying that it was a larger scale. So it's showing a small area, but they're using the um, contour intervals of 20 feet, um, even though it's not a say a thousand foot per inch, maybe it's 500, 500 feet per inch, okay. but they're using, they're going for um, 20 foot, okay. so oh no, so that's not a backwards foot foot thing. Yeah, there so are more intervals per, um, in the small, in the larger in a smaller scale. area. Yeah. Right. Let's not use larger and smaller scale because yeah. I think that yeah. term is just really yeah. hard. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, what you guys are saying then is that they're choosing a contour interval of 20 but probably the amount of amount of area that they're covering is actually yeah. at that scale smaller. Okay. So uh, that sounds good. Kind of along the same track. Yeah. I mean, what if you had like you're surveying 25 miles and the difference in elevation is 10 feet? You'd have to have different sheets of paper. <laughs> but <laughs> to you start with, so you might have different scale scales. Would be really, really small, and you'd want to put probably way more than one contour yeah, line. So I mean, can't you customize or maybe you don't, you know. I just don't understand. Well, you can't customize okay, so on, on, on drawings, there's, there's always a page that shows everything, right? Yeah. So even on, this is, 
I guess this is mostly architectural because we did not do anything outside the building, so there's no civil engineering drainage plans or anything on here. But what they still have, you know, a picture, a very small yeah. scale of the build, the whole campus, right? And then we have a small, a little larger, but still a small scale of the buildings. But in the end, you have to zoom in and find details, right? So that's referred to as detail drawings. So in a case where you're doing, you know, 25 miles, you will have one drawing that is a very small scale because you're putting a large, uh, yeah. a large thing on the sheet of paper, but then you're going to have to show detailed drawings for things. So you would have two different sets of scales. I'm just saying, Does that make sense? even though your scale was really tiny, you know, it was like one inch equals whatever. 2,000 feet or something like that, okay. you'd probably want your, your contour intervals to be, you know, every foot if there's only a very little elevation difference in the whole map. You know what I mean? You wouldn't want to just have five lines of this huge piece of paper. You'd want yes, to have, you like, would have lots, to have more. Like little amounts of... <laughs> That's correct. So you might have to have, I see what you're saying, and maybe this again is for average terrain, right? So yeah. we're talking that there is some sloping, but if you have completely yeah. flat terrain, yeah, you're not going to just put three contour lines in. You'll probably put a lot more in. And then maybe the contour interval would be smaller. This is just to use, like, generally? This is just generally. So this this is in the context of what we're going to be working with. Okay? But no, that's a really good point. Both points are really good. So if it's really steep or really flat, we're going to have differences. Um, Contours are plotted only for elevations evenly divisible by the contour interval. So let's take a think about that. If I choose an interval of 10 feet, elevations of 100, 110, 120 are fine. Because you want it to be multiples of 10. They have to be multiples of 10. You're not going to choose 105, 115, and 125. Even though they're 10 feet apart, they're not multiples of 10, so you would not use them. Does that make sense? Yes. So a more obvious one might be, I'll leave the pen marker over there. A more obvious is if I'm using a five foot interval, I'm going to use, you know, 100 feet, 105 feet, 110 feet, etc. right? I'm not going to use 102, 107. 12, right? It just seems weird, doesn't it? Right? So we're not going to do that. We're always going to make sure that the contour lines we're choosing are multiples of the number, whatever the interval is. And we're going to get some practice because you're going to be drawing some contour lines today on a topo. Um, and this Z kind of addresses your your uh, comment before about the face where we didn't see the, the elevation lines. Right. Every fifth contour is called an index contour. It should be drawn thicker. Bless you. Bless you. For example, if I have a 10 foot interval, these would be my index contours. How are they figuring that out? Our contour interval is 10 feet. Every fifth line is indexed. So how did they figure out that the 100, 150, and 200 are indexed? Because they're doing zero every 50 feet. Okay, zero every 50 feet. So what did you do? You took the 10 foot interval, you multiply it by five, and you get 50, and it's every 50 feet. It's like an index interval. Inner index interval, is that uh, the word that's used in no, another no. term? No, no, I just came up with that. Okay. So 10, so whatever the interval is, times 5. So let's go back to our drawing here. You'll notice that there are no index contours on here, right? So what did they do instead? They labeled every single contour line. So what was the interval on this? So what is the interval on this map? 20-foot interval. So I take 20 feet and I multiply by what? Five. Five, because every fifth one is indexed. 
and that comes out to be 100 feet, right? What's the lowest elevation on this map? Zero. Well, the, the, that's yeah, actually zero point. because this, it looks to me like this is jutting out into the water, right? So let's just say, well, let's just say 20 because that's what we see. So the contours are going from 20 to what? What's the highest one? 280. 280. So if they did index any, what would they index? 120. They started at 20. Um, you have to still look at it in terms of multiples. So let's look at our example here. Let's go back to the example. So if a 10-foot interval multiplied by 5, that's every 50 feet, it has to be multiples of 50. Does everybody see that? It has to be multiples of 50. So we're looking at multiples of 100. So which ones would be indexed? 100, 200. Be indexed because they have to be multiples, multiples of 100. So the indexes would be 100, 200, 300. So hang on, let me just continue. So that would mean that this was, let's uh, scroll up just a little bit. So this would have been indexed, right, continue. The 200 would have been indexed. And what does index mean? How does index, how do the index contours look a little bit different? They're, they're, they're thick. Thick. Um, and um, in graphics, I know all lines on drawings are dark, except what lines are light. Construction lines. Construction lines are the only lines that are light. So that if you photocopy your drawing, the, con the construction lines, construction lines are lines that are used to draw things, right? The construction lines are the only things that wouldn't appear if you photocopy. Everything else is dark. Hidden lines are dark. Uh, the visible lines are dark. Center lines are dark. But they're thin or thick. You see the difference between light and dark and thin and thick? All drawings on here, all drawings everywhere on here, are going to be dark. If I photocopied them, I want to be able to photocopy them. They're all dark. But the difference is thin and thick. So hidden lines are thin, and visible lines are thick. So what we're dealing with, these are all dark lines, not, but and a bold is not a term that's used because bold is used in like Word documents, you know, not on drawings. So that means that these guys have to be thicker, just as dark as the others, but thicker. And then is there a 300? There's no 300. But can you see why, and this is kind of what you were saying about the reasoning, Ivan. Could you see why they're not doing index lines? There's only two of them. Oh, there's probably another one. But there's one here, and there's one here. Typically, the reason to have indexes is so that you only have to label the elevation of the indexes. But th would that be a problem on this one? If we only labeled the 100 and the 200, would there be a problem? Yes. Yeah, it would be a problem. I wouldn't really be un understand the lay of the land as well. So in this particular example, since there weren't a lot of indexes, I labeled all of them. But there might be cases where you look at a topographic map, and if you have topographic maps at home, you should pull them out. See, there's probably, if there's a lot of elevation change, then, and they're close together, they're only going to label the, the, um, the, uh, the index ones. So in that case, you have to make the call, just like your question about a long road and how are you going to make the call. I was just going to ask, what are, what are the lines where they all come to the gullies? Yeah, we're going to look at what those kind of lines in a little bit, and then we'll come back. Seven. So, um, 
What I'm going to do is the two of you will be together, <coughs> three of you, th actually, how's that? I can change it here. Two of you, three of you, three of you, two of you, three of you. So what you're going to do is each one is taking one, and I want you to understand it so you can explain it to all of us. All right? So Z, Allison, and Jason, you're going to take the first bullet. Daniel and Melissa, the second one. Orders group third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Okay? And there are some examples here. Do you have the packet? Oh. <laughs> I'll come around. showing that boundary where I did not survey. So it totally can go off the page. But what about the example here? These guys are just kind of ending in midair, and you can't do that. So you can't just end them. Right, you can't do that, and you got to close them. They have to be closed loops, or they go off the page. B would be a good example where there are closed loops. And notice they did put an index here, right? An index contour because it's thicker. Okay, second, Daniel Melissa, contours are perpendicular to their direction and maximum slope. What's that mean? That they, that they wrap around the thing nicely, kind of, I guess. Okay. You know, so they don't like, so it's not like a top of a mountain and there's a line going through it or something. So it has to I line up. But Daniel, you want to try explain this? Good. So if the slope is going up like this, here are the contour lines. Or the way it was written, if these are the two contour lines that you see, the line perpendicular to those two contours tells you the direction of the slope. Good. Okay. It's determining up and down. Yeah, and that's where you get your horizontal distance, right? So if you have two contour lines, you want to find the line that's perpendicular to both of them, and that would be the distance. Can I use a scale? Can I use an engineering scale to measure the horizontal distance? Yeah. Yes, and I should because I'm getting, uh, I'm using the scale. I'm getting a horizontal distance, and that's what this is. The horizontal distance that's going to allow me to figure out the slope. Right? I can calculate the slope if I know that the contour interval here, the just the vertical distance is 10 and I know what this distance is, I can calculate the slope because I know the change in vertical and the change in horizontal distance. Okay, three. 
The slope between adjacent contour lines is assumed to be uniform. Therefore, it's necessary that breaks in grade be located on a topographic survey. And this we didn't really talk about when we were out there. So what does it mean? Um, basically, it means that if you were to look at the 150 and the 140 contour line, it's assumed that the slope between the 150 and the 140 contour line is constant at the perpendicular. That's right. And you notice that the slope at the the lower part of the 140 to 150, this is different. What's happening here is different than what's going on here. And this is what you were asking about. So we're seeing an example now. So let's try to figure out what in the lay of the land is going on here. You know what the, the uh, you know what the contour lines are. You know what the elevations are. Tell me what's going on there. So, okay, so let's think of it this way. If I connected this line right here, we know that it's 150 here. What's the elevation right here? Something higher than 150. Something, is it higher or lower? Lower, yeah, lower right? right? So right here it would be lower. Right here it's lower. Okay. Right? So at this point it's lower. At this point it's lower. It doesn't reach that elevation, yeah. the 150, until you pull out a little bit. So we have some drop-off that's going on here and a drop-off that's going here. So using that thing, well, it's not necessarily a lake. It's, it's some kind of... It's, it's, it's going in a direction, it's either a river, it's either a, it's either a ridge that's higher or it's some kind of river that's going down. Watershed. And is it, we know that this is, first of all, is this a hill or a depression? Depression. It's a depression, right? So as it is, <laughs> we're starting up really high, high, and we're going down, right? So as we're going down, this is up, this is higher, and this goes into lower, and then what's happening here? What do you think? The river flowing into it. Okay, so is the river going towards the center? Yes. So again, let's go back to this. If I if I look at this area right here, I know the elevation is 140 here. I know the elevation here is. I'm sorry. This, it's less than 150. This one's less than 140. Water is running into that gully. Does everybody see that? Yes. Yes. So water is running down into that depression. Because the actual elevation here, when it should be 150, is less than 150. So there's a depression here, there's a depression here. And since it's decreasing, the and it might not be water, it could be like a dry dry riverbed or something, but it's basically going down this way. Seasonal creek. I probably should. I was going to ask that, that. Have you ever written on there with your uh, marker? <laughs> 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 I thought we had a wood. I'll clean it up later. Now there we put the idea in our head. Uh, no. <laughs> I know. Did you know on a whiteboard if you use a Sharpie pen, you know how to get it off? No. No. Uh, hairspray. Aquanet. Easier, easier, easier. Spit. Vinegar. No, that's it. Alcohol? You just take a regular white, uh, uh, a whiteboard marker and you write oh, yeah. right over the Sharpie wow. marker and, and it gets it right off and then you oh, just wow. erase it. You know what? Okay, see? So I'm just curious. You said that, you know, uh, I mean, the contour is perpendicular to the actual slope, right? So uh, just because, how do you know that? Water is going to that particular in that direction. Uh, no, I know it's going that direction because you know 179, 60, 150, 140. Okay, but there's no way to tell that the water is actually going to that little triangle. If there was water in a, on a, on a topo map, you would see that it was a straight moving It'd be straight. Those are the lowest points on the map. <laughs> no, I'm saying the, the tip of that triangle, right, is at the same elevation as the conical round. Right. right. So that so it doesn't necessarily mean that there's running there's water running. Well, we don't know if there's water or no water. Okay. At all, right, right. But we know if there was water running. Right. So would, we know here. that it's lower here. It's lower here than it should be. Right. This it would be if it was 
a hill, it was just a gra no, no, sorry. If it was a gradual depression like this, yeah. this would be 150. But since it's not connected, you know, and it doesn't get to a 50 ele 150 elevation here, you know that this is the lower part. Right here it's lower, right here it's lower. So it's right. a divot in our, you know, if we were to build this. At oh, I see. So you can kind of have a little bowl there. I see. I can be yeah, there. Yeah, there. Yeah, there. <laughs> no, no, I mean, like, yeah. Okay. okay, so let's do this. I have all these, um, you guys, I have all these things that we could use as layers. And what we can do is cut out the 170, cut out the 160, cut out the 150 and the 140, and then we're basically going to have a 3D model of it. So let's do that, okay? And then it'll be easier. Okay. All right. Let's do that. Um, let's keep going, and then we'll do that when we have break time. Okay. We're up to number four. Mark, Brian, Logan. The distance between contours indicates the steepness of the slope. Wide separation denotes gentle slope, close spacing, steep slope, even in parallel spacing, uniform slope. Hard to say it better than that. <laughs> yeah, since we already talked about it, it's not any new information. Say it better. I think you're looking on the topo map. So uh, you see a lot of lines yeah. close together, you know. You're going to be sweating a lot. Yeah, that's right. OK, next, number five. So you guys, irregular contours signify rough, rugged country. Smooth lines implied gradual slopes and changes. So. This is an example, right? This is not, there's something going on here that we don't know. That little peak that Z was bringing up, that is an example of this. Okay, okay. sounds good. Yeah. Okay, next. A contour must be a single continuous line and should not branch into two contours of the same elevation. And it should not look like C. It should not look like C. And, and this is impossible, isn't it? Why, why is this impossible right here? Because a 150 contour in fact that terminates. Well, it's saying that at this point right here, if I were to continue the 150, this point has two elevations, 140 and 150. And unless it's a cave, it can't have two elevations. Right? Wouldn't a cave have two? Actually, a cave would have three elevations. Top of the cave, uh, on the ground surface above, the roof, and the bottom. And I think one of the articles in the beginning of the packet or on the website now um, talks about surveying caves. That's but there's so cool. no way that one point could have two elevations. So there's, there's definitely a problem here. If, if this 150 ended, you guys, if the 150 ended, it would look like this. It would go up and around, up and around. And this 140 would go up and it would come around like that. We're going to have some practice. Okay. You guys, Nathan, what happened? Cody, you, you're doing. Uh, oh, I thought we. Well, we did. We just did it. We said don't do it like C. Oh, right, right. right. Just, uh, <laughs> okay, you guys. Um, so a good example is. A. Well, let's see. Concentric closed contours that increase in elevation represent hills. A contour forming a closed loop around lower ground is called a depression. And then hatchers. So what are hatchers? Oh, so on A, yeah. on, on elevation 140, around the contour line, uh, this the, the way the line, the direction of the line that indicates the uh, way of the depression. That's right. The the so we can see on these elevations, I we look up here for A, you see that it's going down, so there's a depression here. Hatchers show the, which way the depression is going. So notice you don't see hatchers on this. Why? because it's increasing. What can you say about the elevation that's inside this 210? It's less than 220. It's less than 220 and it's greater than 210, right? And that's all you know. So you don't know if it plateaus. You don't know if there's a peak that doesn't go to 220. So typically what you see on a contour is you see spot elevations. The term spot elevations is like maybe at this point I'm putting on right now, maybe it's 219.8 feet. 
So typically you see contour elevations, but then you also see a spot elevation here and here. So you have an idea of what the lowest point is or the highest point. Okay. This we're going to talk about later. Okay. Um, so I want to look at this, and then we're going to take a longish break, and we'll be able to build uh, a contour, build a, a hill or a depression, and then also I want to uh, do some topo mapping. So let's take a look at the information they have here. So I'm on page 57. I guess I should probably make a favor. So these are field notes, right? Left or right side of a notebook? Left. Okay, so let's take a look at what's going on. The heading of this column says station. Then it says stadia interval, which we haven't dealt with stadia, so that might not be that important to us. The next one is an azimuth. We know what an azimuth is, right? Mm -hmm. It's direct. Since they don't say what the reference is, what's the reference? Uh, straight up. North. North, north, right? Azimuth is reference from the north. All right, right. Okay, then they give you a vertical angle or a rod reading. So sometimes it's angles and sometimes it's rod readings. And then we're looking at horizontal distance and elevation. So where is our piece of equipment set up? Well, Keep reading. At the bottom. Look at the, um, read the first two lines. Where's the tripod? Tripod is set up at B. Why did they do that? Well, notice there are six columns, right? And on your field book, if you flip over your field book, how many columns are there? There are six. And usually what we do, what do we usually put our first column as? The point that we're set up as, right? So we've always, our field books, with the exception of taping, the first column represent the point that your equipment is on. Right? And what did the second column represent? Your shooting point. The point cited. And then what's the rest of the stuff? Yeah. The direct measurements, right? Direct measurements. And then at the end is the indirect measurements, the things that you have to calculate. The, um, the lab that you did for heights was a little tricky, right? Because didn't you have to shoot the bottom of the tree and then the top of the tree? So you might have been on point A, and then you shot the bottom of the tree, T sub bottom, and then you might have shot the top of the tree. And then you got different information, maybe horizontal angle, vertical angle, horizontal distance, etc. So in this particular case, they're set up on B. And they could have used the first column to say where they were set up at, but that's all that would be in there. In our all our labs, we like set up on one point, we shot three points. One, two, three, right? Then we moved on to another point, point Y. One, two, three. This is it. But in topography, you are set 